Hello there, welcome back. In this episode of Pimp My Filter, we're going to be taking a look at another hang on the back filter. And this one is the All Pond Solutions 800 HO Plus. Although I think it should have been introduced by Hacksaw Jim Duggan. 800 HO Plus. I don't know why it isn't 800-HOB, like hang on back. That's what most people would call this type of filter. It's just hang on. You, may, you could hang it on anything. You could hang it on the back of a door if you wanted. Wouldn't do any good there though. Let's get into the box, take a look at this filter. Actually, before we get into this box, I'll just tell you what size tank this particular filter is recommended for. Anywhere between 75 to 190 litres, which in US gallons is 20 to 50 US gallons. Although this is All Pond Solutions, I know a lot of their filters are also marketed by different companies in different territories. So the chances are in Asia this is called something else. Chances are you guys have got something that looks very similar to this that will be, I don't know, maybe the Sun Sun or something like that. You can tell me because I don't know. This one is All Pond Solutions. That's the UK company, but this will be made in China. And look at this, I've even got myself a little skinny tank with a yellow background so that the black stands out well against it. I got this, actually I got this off Andy from Dramatic Aquatics when he was moving house. I basically just cadged it off him. I didn't want to leave this line around because this is a cracking one for flow demonstration videos that I will be doing in the future. This one won't be a flow demonstration video because this filter isn't mine, it has to go back. This one is owned by Mercia or Mercia. M-I-C, oh God, give me a second. M-I-R-C-E-E, -E. I would say Mercia, Mercia. Apologies, I don't. I probably butchered both of those pronunciations of the name. We've only communicated by email, unfortunately, so I don't know the exact pronunciation. Right, it's immaterial anyway. Thank you very much for sending me this. I've wanted to take a look at one of these for a while. So let's bring the camera in and take a close look. Before we do that, I'll just take that off the bottom because that didn't actually come with it. That's one of the things that I'm going to do to improve it. So we'll just run through it based on where the water goes. So basically water's drawn in through an adjustable intake and it can also be drawn in through here as well which is a surface skimmer. This knob adjusts how much is drawn in between here and here. This knob here controls the overall flow rate by adjusting how much can be drawn into the pump and if we get the top off we can see that the water goes down right to the bottom so the pump draws water in from the tank down to here and then it puts it into a UV now the UV isn't on at present but when it is you'll see that indicator light will light up. So in here we've got a 5 watt UV and from the UV the water actually comes out at two different places. A little bit of water comes out the top here through this pad, through this section here which can be filled with media and then ultimately comes back out to the tank. I take this big cartridge out and see where the majority of the water will travel. Okay, so that's the cartridge out. You can see the outlet here that goes through that little polishing pad that was in the top of the cartridge system. But what you can't see is the main outlet, which is actually just down here, and that diverts the water down to the bottom of this compartment, and then it rises up through those trees or cartridges or whatever and then comes back to the tank. So ultimately all the water that gets drawn in through here or through here 
will go back to the tank. And that's our cartridge. So as you can see on the top, we've got a very fine pad. And that kind of acts as a polishing pad, I suppose. You are going to get a little bit of water coming out of here. That will trap fine muck. And these trays are actually empty. And as far as I can tell, they actually come from the manufacturer empty, which is a good thing because it just enables you to do whatever you want with it. And what we're going to do is cram that full of media because most of the water is going to go down here to the bottom, rise up through this big, reasonably coarse pad, up through this big tray that we can fill with media and back out to the tank. And the little bit of water that's going to be coming in through the top of here is going to drop down through more media and again come back to the tank. So that gives us really the potential to fill both of these with filter media, which is great. So really now that I've explained how the water goes through this thing, all it's left to do is fill these two trays with media. That's pretty much going to be it for this setup. You could take that coarse foam out and go with coarse and then maybe the medium pad but to be honest I don't really know what you would gain from that because most of the water is going to be traveling up and even the relatively fine muck is going to get caught in that quite coarse pad eventually all the fine muck may get caught in that very fine pad but there's not much of it there and I'll take that out and let you see that's tiny. I mean, for you smokers out there, that's probably about the size of a big rolly paper. It's not very big at all. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what you would replace that with either, because all of the fine pads that I've got are anywhere between inch and a half and two inches thick. And I don't think you could rip them that small. So if you are going to have to buy any replacement parts for this particular filter, it would be that little fine one in the top of there. Right, let's get this taken apart and you notice the way that came apart? That's very much like the dual internal filters. They have kind of a, a folding cage that holds the various foams and the filter media. All Pond Solutions seem to have borrowed that idea and have used it to very good effect. So, we've got two compartments here. I'm going to fill these with bio gravel which will enable us to get maximum surface area into a minimal space and I'll do that, come back to you and let you know exactly how much I've got in here. Okay, we've packed that out with the bio gravel which is a porous gravel made with the same materials as the bio home. If you don't know anything about it uh, just look it up. And remember you can use whatever you want in here in the way of biomedia. I use this because it fits in very very well and I know it works to provide a home for aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. Aerobic bacteria sorts out the ammonia and nitrite, anaerobic bacteria sorts out nitrate. So in effect if we have enough of this in a filter in a suitably sized tank we should get a full cycle which is zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and very low nitrate. So again, that's why I'm using this. Um, 650 grams in total, which is pretty good. I'm quite pleased with that, because there's a lot of hang on the back filters, just rely on cartridge systems, and they don't really give you much scope for doing anything with. But this one, it just kind of leaves it up to you, you know gives you the empty shell and it just says look just do what you want with it and what we've done with it should be quite effective so we simply drop that back in there as so and that's our filter done good times now the one thing I forgot to mention there was the thing I showed you at the very start, which is this. This is actually off a fluval hang on the back filter. You can buy these replacements online. It's basically a reasonably coarse sponge, 
to go on the inlet of a hang on the back filter. So that is going to go on there. That will attract quite a lot of muck. It will save our main filter getting clogged so easily. This is quite easy to take off, squeeze out in the sink and then you just slide it back onto the intake there. They will last a long time and they are pretty cheap if you buy compatible ones. If you buy the proper fluval ones, really for what they are, they cost too much money. Just get compatible ones. I've got a bag of about 50 or something and they didn't cost me that much. I just bought them for these videos. So that's going on the bottom. That will complete that filter upgrade. I'm actually just going to have a quick look to see how much this thing costs. Because I know all Pond Solutions stuff is generally towards the lower end of the cost scale as far as aquarium gear goes. Hmm. Presently online they're £29.99. Which considering how many features that thing's got on is pretty good when you compare it to a lot of the other hang on the back filters from other manufacturers. It's pretty well made and it's got a reasonable capacity for biological filter media as well, which is a big thing with hang on the back filters. So that's not bad. The pump pumps 800 litres per hour, which is 210 gallons per hour. And it, because we've got 650 grams of media in there, it should provide a full cycle on a tank of roughly 65 litres, which is about 17 gallons. Maybe it's a little bit more. It'll certainly keep ammonia and nitrite at zero in tanks much bigger than that. But that's quite an easy part of the cycle to get complete. It's that last part, it's that anaerobic part which relies on a certain amount of suitable bacteria and a certain amount of suitable filter media. That's the critical bit to get the full cycle, to get the nitrate down. That's the hard bit. So yeah, that's not bad. It's not a bad filter at all. If you've liked this video, give it the thumbs up. If you've got a filter you'd like me to take a look at, by all means get in touch. My email and phone number are in the video description. Phone is probably the best. Please only people in the UK because for me to post this abroad would cost a fortune. I do this really out of my own pocket. All you've got to pay is the postage here. No matter what size the filter is, I will fill it up with good media and send it back to you at my own cost. I'm all too happy to do that, no matter what size the filter is. I mean, there was a time a couple of weeks ago, I did two filters in one week, and each one of those filters took eight kilograms of Biohome Ultimate, which cost me a hell of a lot. And I posted them back 24 hour courier as well. But I'm happy to do that because it enables me to build up a really accurate database of knowledge and information which I'm adding to my Filter Pro website. And eventually the filters page on there will have all the filters that are featured in this series plus a load more. It'll have links to where you can buy them. It'll have how the water flows through them, what size tanks they would be suitable for with a heavy stock and a normal stock. And also it will have, what else will it have? It'll have something else on there. There's loads of information. I cannot remember. It'll have a lot of useful information anyway. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Damn it. I forgot to say in this video, the UV can be switched on and off. There's a little blue sliding switch here, so it enables you to switch it on and off. If you're just setting up a new filter, it's best to have the UV off for a couple of weeks, just to allow good bacteria to flow right through the system. After that, there will be enough in the biological media to totally populate it and then you can put the UV back on. UV is good for killing parasites and also green water. Generally they aren't a problem but if they do become a problem flick that on and you're sorted.